I'm at a loss to explain what is causing this weather and why it is taking quite a while. That sudden drop in temperature has half an hour ago. Mexican officials closed the border. In the line so many U.S. refugees. We prepare to go live to Los Angeles. What you see is happening now. Look over there behind me. That's a, a tornado. Yes, a twister. This is there. just massive. has been dormant for 400 years. That is until 2010 when it started erupting again and residents there have been reporting on increased activity there for the past few weeks and getting some very scary imagery just like this. So it's a serious situation. Well, heavy rain turned dangerous in San Diego, actually washing out roads, tearing down trees, even bringing down a bridge, roads, cars underwater, manhole sinkholes reported, desert center of California, a bridge collapsing, trapping a truck beneath the debris. Fire officials say this is some of the heaviest rain they've ever seen. Well, there was actually snow atop Mauna Kea on the Big Island in the middle of July. The winter-like conditions have created icy road conditions, and a park ranger reportedly uh, reported a mix of rain, snow, and fog this morning. It was another hot day in our islands, hitting 90 degrees in Honolulu, and it could get even hotter this weekend. But it was also pretty chilly. How's that, you say? Well, there was actually snow atop Mauna Kea on the Big Island in the middle of July. The winter-like conditions have created icy road conditions, and a park ranger reportedly uh, reported a mix of rain, snow, and fog this morning. As a result, the road to the summit is closed at the visitor's information station. So how can it be so hot on the ground but so cold on the mountain? Justin Cruz joins us with more. Just. Yeah, Joe, it's all about elevation. Temperatures decrease with elevation, at least initially, and weather balloons are launched from Hilo and Lihue daily. They track some of the numbers uh, coming out, and this is what we saw today at different elevations. 5,000 feet, it was about 71 degrees, and then 10,000 feet, 28 degrees, already below freezing. 19,000 feet, it was 12 degrees. So you could see how it starts warmer and gets colder through elevation. But these are normal temperatures. We see this every day. But it wasn't the cause of the snow. The snow was caused by added moisture. We had some thunderstorms that fired off off the Big Island last night, and the thunderstorms can send clouds and moisture anywhere to 15, 30,000 feet or higher. And that's uh, how that moisture got up to the Big Island summits and, of course, froze, and we have some snow. But for most of us that live near sea level, we feel the heat. This is the heat index at this hour right now. It feels like 
91 in Honolulu, 93 in Kailua Kona, 87 in Lihui, and 86 in Kahului, 85 in Hilo. So that's what we're really feeling near the surface. We'll have more on the weekend weather coming up a little bit later. Joe, back to you. And this is a live picture of that breaking news story we first told you on News Channel 3 at the top of the news. This is called the North Fire. Look at those burn cars on Interstate 15 in San Bernardino County. This is the Cajon Pass, the main route to Las Vegas. This is all connected to a 2,000-acre fire that broke out this afternoon. It's burned dozens of vehicles. We have the numbers of 50 to 75 vehicles that are on the freeway there. Dozens are burned. Others are just stranded there. So far, no one has been harmed by the flames. It was burning in the median just north of State Route 138, according to Caltrans. What was interesting about this, and you see aircraft flying now, but earlier some of the airplanes, the air tankers had to be grounded because a drone was spotted in the area. And the protocol calls for those air tankers to come down when the drones are in the area because they fear that there could be a collision. And the live shot you're looking at are water dropping helicopters that have been making targeted drops right on the vehicles, whereas the air tankers have been cutting a line. You see over to the right of the screen there that orange Foscheck line, which is creating a cooling off area for the fire. If it gets there, it won't be as much. The annual State of the Climate report released Thursday said 2014 was the warmest year on record, going back 135 years. Temperatures continued to rise and glaciers kept shrinking. The impact has been dramatic in Greenland, the huge ice-covered island between the North Atlantic and the Arctic Oceans. Here's Vanita Nair. Almost eight years to the day in 2007, it was 35 degrees below zero on top of Greenland's vast ice sheet. Strong winds and blowing snow were more the norm for researchers there. This summer, the sun is shining and the ice is thinning, 27 degrees above zero, 62 degrees warmer. Researchers are trying to determine if the warming is a trend. The world's second largest ice body, Greenland, is more than one quarter the size of the continental United States, and its ice nearly two miles high at its thickest. Since 1989, researchers have been ferried to the Greenland Environmental Observatory. Greenland stores an enormous amount of water in the form of ice. University of Montana glaciologist Joel Harper has been camping each summer on Greenland's ice sheet, studying how glaciers and ice move. In recent decades, it's certainly been melting more than is replenished from snowfall, and that's causing sea level to come up. Evidence of the increased ice melt can be seen from the air in the form of these blue pools. Satellite images show that on the warmest day this month, half the ice sheet's surface was melting double the norm for this time of year. As glaciers melt, they darken, which combined with sediment and global air pollution further speeds up the process. In Greenland, the farther north you go, the dirtier the air becomes. University of Colorado researcher Michael O'Neill has been measuring pollutants here since 2008. Most of the industry is in the northern hemisphere, and that's where we see the highest concentrations of the man-made chemicals. The darker the ice, the faster it melts into the ocean. Greenland contributes about 40 percent of current sea level rise. Over the past century, the world's oceans have risen four to eight inches. By the end of this century, scientists predict sea level rise will be the greatest environmental threat to coastal cities from Miami to Mumbai. Benita Nair, CBS News, New York.
game turned dangerous in San Diego, actually washing out roads, tearing down trees, even bringing down a bridge. Roads, cars underwater, manhole sinkholes reported. Desert center of California, a bridge collapsing, trapping a truck beneath the debris. Fire officials say this is some of the heaviest rain they've ever seen. I've uh, worked here for almost 17 years, and I've seen that Alvarado Creek fill up and get pretty high and flowing really good, but never to the point where it got this high and coming over the road and almost into the trailer parks. San Diego seeing more rainfall than it's ever seen in the month of July. I-10 still closed uh, just outside of uh, Palm Springs because of a 30-foot chunk of bridge collapse. Everybody is other guy's hardcore, at least he knows what he's doing. He's not afraid to get wet. I just want to make sure it's fucking... left behind by the area's first tornado in nearly a decade. The National Weather Service confirmed an EF1 tornado touched down in Rock and Walworth counties on Saturday. In Johnstown, near Janesville, the tornado ripped through a barn and destroyed two farm buildings nearby, just a mess left behind. Officials say that tornado traveled five miles. It was pretty interesting to see that, that path. While it was short, it was quick and it was wide enough to cause that significant damage. There was indeed an EF1 tornado that occurred in this area. And despite all that damage, fortunately, no one was hurt. If you are as fascinated by volcanoes as the rest of us are here at the Weather Channel, you must feast your eyes on this. This is from Mount Sinabung in Sumatra, Indonesia. Now, this volcano sits at more than 8,000 feet tall and has been dormant for 400 years. That is until 2010 when it started erupting again. And residents there have been reporting on increased activity there for the past few weeks and getting some very scary imagery just like this. So it's a serious situation. Another volcano that we wanted to bring you, time lapse video of this out of Colima, Mexico. This volcano has been active in years past, but reported to be the most intense activity since early 1900s. I'm Danielle Banks, The Weather Channel. Otherwise, we go inside to like the children's museum, perhaps. Here, the summer is so hot and winter so cold. It's <laughs> but it's better. It's better. I took a vacation day, and I'm out here just trying to cool off from the extreme heat and just having fun with my family. You want to enjoy the sunshine, of course, but then you can't out in the blistering heat so I think yeah just finding some some shade for us to sit while the kids run in the water. This kind of heat can be dangerous. People have to make smart decisions. People of course have to stay hydrated. Uh, don't uh, stay out in the sun any longer than you have to. Be aware of the challenge of this circumstance. locations around Kern County that were inundated with flooding and mudslides overnight. In some areas, emergency crews simply bracing for a possible repeat today. 23 ABC's Laura Acevedo joins us live from an area southeast of Bakersfield where the water is still flowing. Laura. 
Thanks, Mike. We're out here on Tahone Highway in Mountain View Road, where, as you can see, the water is still flowing pretty quickly from that storm that came last night. Water is flowing. I don't know if you can see these people out here. They are doing everything CHP wants you not to do. But earlier this morning, crews were out here rescuing the driver of this vehicle. He was stuck through the floodwaters, had to get onto the roof. Fire crews from County Department Truck 141, I'm sorry, 41, came out here and had to rescue him and get him out of that vehicle. He was not injured. Now let's take a look at some video from earlier this morning. You can see the stream of water was rushing a lot quicker. Now it has seemed to gone down, but fire crews, CHP saying, if you see barricades like this, do not go through them. CHP is not out here right now, but they are saying this road remains closed and you should not go through it. Do not get into the water at all. The water is moving faster than it appears and your car or yourself, you could get swept away. Back to you. A bomb ends up on a Bay Area beach. This morning, ABC News is looking into how it got there and why something like this could happen again. This morning, a section of St. Pete Beach has reopened to the public after authorities blew up that bomb yesterday. ABC Action News reporter Adam Weiner is there. And Adam, a lot of people wondering how this World War II era device could wash ashore in the first place. Yeah, I know a lot of people, uh, it might seem strange for a World War II era bomb to wash ashore from the Gulf of Mexico in the first place, but according to a congressional report, there may actually be a lot of unused weapons that were actually dumped in the Gulf of Mexico in the years following World War II. Obviously, one of them appears to be what blasted here yesterday. Take a look at the blast hole left behind from that device that was found. These are photos from a viewer who sent them to us. Uh, obviously, just uh, quite a massive hole. That was before they filled it all in with sand and whatever it was, this M122, that was the official uh, type of bomb, just one of the kinds of ammunition that was actually discarded into the Gulf after the war. That's all from a 2007 report on the leftover ammunition. Uh, and it's really just what the Army even bothered to report. This was all after the, this was all really before the U.S. government decided there might be a more environmentally friendly way of disposing these kinds of weapons. Uh, and uh, obviously some of them could be very toxic. Now, authorities tell us that the one that washed ashore just yesterday is not toxic, and all that's really left behind is just this dark residue you can see here right on the, uh, the sand here. The MacDill Air Force Base experts telling us that it's safe, uh, and a lot of this uh, residue is eventually just going to wash right back into the Gulf, but it's fine. We've seen beachgoers walking by, checking it out this morning. Just very curious, but the authorities again telling us there's really nothing but just leftover residue here on the sand. Back to you in the studio. Film footage more than eight decades old is center stage in Great Britain tonight. The newspaper The Sun has published images of Queen Elizabeth as a little girl performing a Nazi salute. And as Jonathan Vigliotti tells us, Buckingham Palace is firing back. The home video obtained by British tabloid The Sun shows the young queen and her sister waving to the camera in their garden 82 years ago. The queen's mother then raises her hand in what appears to be the Nazi salute. Queen Elizabeth, then a seven-year-old princess, mimics the gesture, followed by her uncle, Prince Edward. The film has raised eyebrows, but royal supporters say it was taken in 1933, long before the atrocities of World War II came into focus. Hitler being in power probably for about six months. Princess Elizabeth is seven, Princess Margaret is three. Uh, Dickie Arbiter is the former press secretary to the Queen. Nobody knew what was in store until very much later in the 30s. That's when public opinion towards Hitler evolves. Case in point, in 1938, England's soccer team came under fire for giving the salute before a game in Berlin. But public opinion didn't stop Prince Edward from flirting with fascism. He soon became a known Nazi sympathizer. In 1937, after abdicating to marry Wallace Simpson, Edward visited Hitler and spent time with his troops. The Sun's managing editor, Stig Abel, called the video one of the earliest known records of Edward's Nazi support. The fact remains that in 1933, led by uh, a man who was to become Edward VIII, the British royal family were uh, doing Nazi salutes to a video. 
The Sun released the video just three weeks after the Queen made her first visit to a former Nazi camp in Germany. In a written statement today, Buckingham Palace said it's disappointing that film, shot eight decades ago and apparently from Her Majesty's personal family archive, has been obtained and exploited in this manner. Buckingham Palace tonight investigating how The Sun got a hold of this private home video. Jim, the paper is not naming their source. Jonathan Vigliotti covering for us tonight in London. Thank you. The Cuban people's oppressors uh, will not hesitate to use this embassy as a spy hub, uh, as they have done in the past to uh, threaten our homeland. Today is a sad day for U.S. national security interests and human rights around the world. Uh, the Castro regime does not represent the people of Cuba because the people of Cuba cannot elect their leaders. Why do I say that? In the presentation today, you heard the foreign minister and others continue to say, on behalf of the Cuban people, those are words that they cannot say because they do not represent the Cuban people. One thing is the regime, another entity altogether is the people of Cuba. The Cuban embassy will represent the Cuban intelligence services that actually are the ones who commit the human rights violations against the Cuban people. It's going to serve as a hub of espionage against, against the United States and against, again, the interests of the Cuban people in the island. It will serve the interests of the military, the generals that illegally smuggle weapons to our enemies and our adversaries. And most directly, that so-called embassy will serve the dictators that continue to impoverish, to brutalize, and to oppress the Cuban people.